So we want to determine if F and G are inverses of each other. Okay, so when we're asked to do that, we immediately need to find F of G of X and G of F of X. And we need to show that both of those are equal to X. So remember, every time, this is what you want to show. So I need to find both of these. I need to find F of G of X. The problem is, this is kind of algebraically intensive. So F of G of X, let's see what this is going to look like. We've got F, so this is 3 blank plus 1 over blank plus 3. Okay. So see, I just took the F function. I'm leaving a blank in place of X, and this is what I have. Now, in place of this blank, I need to put 1 minus 3X over X minus 3. Now, what my job is, I need to show that this is just equal to X, and that's it, just X. So what's bothering me about this is that I've got this extra denominator. See, I've got a numerator denominator, but I've got an extra denominator up here, extra denominator down here. So there's no need to be troubled by that. All we need to do really is just multiply by that denominator on the top and the bottom. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x minus 3. I'm just going to do it to every term. Okay, so there's the top. And then down here on the bottom, and then plus 3 times x minus 3. So what I've done is I've just multiplied by x minus 3 over x minus 3, and then I distributed it through the top and the bottom. There's nothing wrong with that because it's just like I multiplied by 1. But the benefits are pretty cool because what happens is that x minus 3 gets rid of those extra denominators. And then let's see what's left up top. I've got 3 times 1 minus 3x. That's what's left for this whole term right here plus x minus 3. That's what's up top. And down on the bottom, I've got 1 minus 3x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now remember, there's no canceling that's going to go on now. You're not going to do any dividing out yet. Like, you might be tempted to say, oh, there's an x minus 3. I'll divide it with that one. No, because you've got this plus sign here. You don't just have a string of factors up here. You have terms, two terms, and you can't just divide out like that. Okay. If this were all multiplied together up here and this were all multiplied together down here, it'd be different, but you've got this plus. So what we need to do is simplify the top, simplify the bottom, and then see if there's anything that maybe can divide out. So up top, I have 3 minus 9x plus x minus 3. And on the bottom, I've got 1 minus 3x plus 3x minus 9. Now let's see what happens. Up top, these 3's cancel. And we've got negative 8x. On the bottom, the three x's cancel, and we've got negative eight. Ah, so that just equals x. Well, there you go. That's what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that f of g of x is equal to x, and we did it. Okay, we should be proud of ourselves. Okay, but now we go back and we say, okay, well, let me see if I can do the same thing for f uh, g of f of x. Okay, so here I go. I, I go 1 minus 3 parentheses over parentheses minus 3. See, because this is 1 minus 3x, x minus 3. So I just rewrote that, but 
left, left a blank there for the x. Now the function f of x is 3x plus 1 over x plus 3. So here is 3x plus 1 over x plus 3. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply through just like all just like before. This is our, our trick. We're going to multiply through by x plus 3. Now the x plus 3s are going to cancel here and here. So what I'm going to be left with is I'm going to be left with x plus 3 here minus 3 times 3x three plus 1. So I'm kind of skipping a step because I did that step earlier. And I illustrated it with the previous problem or, or the when I was finding f of g of x. So now this is 3x plus 1 minus 3 times x plus 3. See, the x plus 3 canceled here and here, but it didn't cancel here and here. So I've got 1x plus 3 and negative 3x plus 3 here. Then we go through and clear our parentheses and see what we can do with adding like terms. So we've got negative 9x minus 3 over 3x plus 1 minus 3x minus 9. Okay. So see what see what we have now. This one, this one cancel, and we got negative 8x. And down here, we got negative 8. That also equals x. Okay. So there we have it. We've shown that f of g of x and g of f of x both equal x. That shows that these two functions are inverses of each other.